Today we're going to do a Q&A based on the Drag Radio versus Slicks video that I put up a while back. And I got about six real frequently asked questions off of that video. And it kind of broke down to four or five because some of them kind of go hand in hand. And the biggest question was, can I drive them daily? Can I put them on my everyday car? Well, sure, you can do that. There's a couple of reasons why you wouldn't want to do that, but you can do it. They're perfectly legal for it. If you drive with discipline and take it easy in, in, for the weather conditions, you don't have to worry about them slipping and all that. Like everybody's always kind of had the old myth was you can't drive them in the rain. They'll spin the car out, which they will if you don't respect them. So just something to keep in mind. But the other thing is they're really soft. They're really not intended to drive every day, even though you can. But if you do, figure on having to replace them frequently. Because most people I've talked to that have done that, and it pretty much doesn't matter which manufacturer. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video. This is just me answering questions that stemmed from the previous Drag Radios vs. Slicks video, as I stated earlier. It, the manufacturer doesn't really matter. It's that they're so soft that they're going to wear fast. And when you're driving it to work and going off exit ramps and up on ramps and all this stuff, you're putting a lot of side loading on them and going around curves, and you're wearing them quick. Most people are seeming to get between three and 8,000 miles out of them if they drive them every day. And that's really no time at all for a tire. So even if they were cheaper, it would still be an expensive proposition. So it's all a matter of what you want to do and if you want to spend your money that way. So just some things to think about. Another thing is when you drive on the street, you expose them to all kinds of compounds, antifreeze and a bucket of chemicals got dumped in the street and some other place up the road here dumped something else in the street and you ran through a puddle that was full of God knows what on your way to work. And all that stuff touches the tire and can affect the compounds inside of the tire. So that can take away from the longevity of the tire. That can also take away from the tire's built-in resins and compounds ability to do their job and hook the car up when you launch it. So just another reason why you might not want to drive them on the street. So another big question I was getting is, okay, I went ahead and I put drag radials on my car. I adjusted my chassis. It was last season or some test and tune early this year. And I've noticed that my ET is the same, but my mile per hour is down. Or my ET is the same, mile per hour is the same, but I'm turning a few hundred more RPM. What's up with that? Well, as I touched on in the previous videos, a drag slick, and if you've been running slicks, you, you've had this happening to you. They are a bias ply carcass tire. In other words, nylon, Kevlar, that sort of thing for the cording inside a tire carcass with the drag slick material around the outside of it. And as you get down to track and centrifugal force kicks in, that tire will grow. It'll get bigger around. It'll get taller. It can be anywhere from a half inch to an inch and a half, depending on the size of the tire, the width of the rim, how much air is in the tire, the temperature that day. Various things affect that tire growth situation. Well, drag radial is a steel belted radial, just like it says, it is a radial tire. So it's got a very stiff, very firm carcass. It's going to grow just about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, typically, if that. So you don't get that extra effect of that taller gear as you go down the track to give you that little extra couple of miles an hour, that slightly less RPM to run what you usually run. You're at zero when you launch on diameter and you pretty much stay at zero. So to run the same speed with the same gear under the same conditions and all, is it's going to take a few more hundred RPM to make it happen. The third biggest question was, I want to take my car to the show and the tires are a little faded from a season at the track. Can I put tire shine on them? And I'm just going to say you can do it. But if you check with most manufacturers, they don't recommend it because again, the chemicals and all in the tire cleaners and the tire dressings can shorten the life expectancy of your side walls, pull out the compounds, pull out the polymers, soak down into the tread patch area, make it get harder, make it get softer in some cases. There's a lot of chemistry going on behind the scenes and tire rubber. Well, since the beginning of tire rubber, and nowadays especially to get them more longevity, better fuel mileage, better adhesion, 
And the same thing spills over into racing tires. Softer compound with some heat activated sticky compound in it. You can affect that when you put tire shine or tire dressing on them. And then the final and also fairly large number of people asked, how should I, t how do I take care of my drag radials? Well, if it's a car that you only drive during race season, or if it's a car that you only drive on the weekends, when it's not summertime or cruising time for you, put it up on jack stands, take the weight of the car off the tires, take the weight of the car off the springs for that matter. They'll last longer too, help prevent sag, make your coilovers if you've got them, or your regular springs, whichever case may be, last longer because they get to unload and sit there and relax. Same thing with the tires. If you've got drag radials on your car, and this kind of applies to slicks as well, because they got the same polymers in them, the same resins. If you put your car away for the winter, take them off. If it's going to sit for more than a week or so, a couple of weeks, take them off. Put them up on a shelf somewhere. Don't leave them set on the ground. Don't leave them set on concrete. If you're going to leave them on the car, like say you don't have no choice, you don't have anywhere to put your tires, then put a piece of plywood or a couple of pieces of cardboard under your tires so they're not sitting right on the concrete or right on the direct ground because concrete will pull the resin out of your tires. If you notice people that have race cars, if you walk through their garage where their car sits all winter, if they're those that leave the tires on, you'll notice there's a big black sticky spot right where the tire sits all the time. And that's from the resin and the traction, adhesives, traction additives, excuse me, coming out of the rubber and soaking into the concrete. And it's usually pretty sticky right there to your shoe if you step on it and try to twist your foot around, especially on a warm day. So those are the main questions that were asked. I hope you found this interesting, informative, entertaining, if nothing else. Maybe inspiring. Go ahead and try your drag, look at drag radials. Most people that try them don't want to go back to slicks. I can't really do it to my car the way it's set up. So maybe one of these upcoming projects will put a set on it. Uh, as I said, we run them on Bubblegum's car. We've had good luck with them. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a great day.